It's really difficult to erase the diet culture from my brain and it's something I've been working on since July of 2023. And so far I have lost 20 out of 50 pounds. I'm on a 50 pound weight loss journey. I'm using the balanced plate approach. I met with a dietitian and we've been meeting every couple of months. And for the first time in my life, I'm seeing weight loss and I'm not stressing about food. I'm not thinking about it all the time. And I'm really pleased because this is by far the easiest way in my life that I have ever lost weight. Hey everybody, it's Kathy and welcome to my channel. And today I want to talk about 10 shocking things that I stopped doing to lose 20 pounds at age 55. As I alluded to before, I started working with a dietitian in July of 2023 and she's been helping me have a more healthy relationship with food. For most of my life, I have counted calories or points. I was a Weight Watchers Lifetime member and I would lose weight on Weight Watchers. I'd get to about 10 pounds, but then I'd get bored. And the reason why I wanted to try something new is when I was following Weight Watchers or if I was counting points, I could still find a way to, you know, eat food more often that maybe should be a treat once in a while. For me, I have always been a sugar addict. I'm not somebody that like binges on food. I just really like candy. I would like eat candy like there was no tomorrow. And my other vice was like fast food. So it's been a challenge and I just went through a challenging time over Christmas. You can watch the video here where I talked about, you know, the, the things that I struggled with and I'm still struggling with and trying to get back on plan. But for today, I just wanted to share some tips that are helping me on my weight loss. And I thought, you know, if they could help you, you might want to hear about them as well. So the first thing that I did was I quit counting calories or points. And this is so important because whenever I met with a dietitian, she drew me a picture of the balanced plate where you have like a quarter of the plate is protein, a quarter of the plate is fiber rich complex carbohydrates, which our body needs. And the other half of the plate is vegetables. I said to myself, there's no way this is going to work. This is way too much food. It's more food than what I have been eating. And she wanted me to eat three balanced meals a day and two balanced snacks a day. And I thought I'm going to gain weight. And I told her that and she said, just trust the process. So I did, and I have lost 20 pounds. Now, I haven't been diligent since about November because I have some things going on in my life that are very, very stressful at the moment. My husband is um, ill with a serious illness, but he's doing okay today. So, um, you know, don't worry. But I just love this new way of eating. It's not even a diet. And... She's helping me understand that there are other ways to know that if I'm getting healthier. For instance, I still weigh myself every day and I do that just because I want to catch things. If I, you know, go down a slippery slope, then I can catch it at the beginning and, you know, go back to plan. Um, but other things that I'm noticing is that my clothes are fitting differently. It's very important to take your measurements at least once a month because even though you might not have a great loss on the scale for the month, maybe you're down a size. And I find that, you know, not having to obsess about food and not think about, okay, this was eight points. So for lunch, I can have 10 points. I'm not always thinking about what I'm going to eat next. And it's wonderful. It's, it's really, really a wonderful way to lose weight. It's a healthy way to lose weight. You know, maybe you are doing another plan that works for you and it's really important to work with whatever plan works for you, but this is working for me. And I know a lot of you that watch me are also trying the balanced plate approach and it's working for you. So that makes me really happy to hear. The next tip is I stopped worrying about my next meal. Whenever I don't have to, you know, count, okay, I can have that many calories or points in the next meal. It just makes it so much easier. Yes, I should still prep ahead and think about, you know, what I'm going to eat for the week or the next couple of days, 
but it's not like I have to figure out the calorie content. And for example, if I want to go out to the restaurant, it is so much easier to be able to order something this way rather than trying to figure out, well, how many calories, how many grams of fat, you know, and all those things. So it just really takes the stress and the constant worrying about what I can eat next out of the mind. And that has been so, so helpful because if I'm thinking about food, then I seem to want to eat it and get hungry. And I just, I just love this balanced way of eating. And I know that I have two snacks. So if I'm hungry, I can have, you know, a snack and I'm still going to lose weight at a healthy uh, pace. The next thing that I did was I stopped putting deadlines on my weight loss. I am somebody that is very, very hard on myself and I expect like a lot from myself. So I am constantly putting deadlines. I need to lose 20 pounds this month, but that is not practical. I'm 55 years old. Yes, I might lose five or 10 pounds in a month, but maybe I won't. And that's okay. As long as I'm, you know, eating healthy, maybe the weight loss won't show up until the next month because you know, hormones and retaining water and such. And if you're working out, then you're gaining muscle. So I really stopped putting a deadline on myself. Whenever I began my journey in July, I knew I wouldn't get to 50 pounds by the end of the year, but I had hoped I'd get to 25. I got to 20 and you know what? I maintained that weight loss over the holidays. I didn't gain, I didn't lose, I maintained. And that is a huge win for me. So even though I didn't reach, you know, 25 pounds by the end of 23, I still lost 20. And that to me is success and something that I should be proud of. So don't, you know, put such um, defined limits on yourself that so much has to be gone by a certain day. Because I know from my experience, that's just setting me up for failure. Because if I am that rigid, thinking that, you know, I have to lose this amount of weight by this date and I don't get there, then that could, you know, just set me off and I'm gonna to go to the candy store and, you know, undo all the hard work that I have worked so hard to get to where I am. So try not to put like really hard limits on your weight loss. Maybe just say, okay, I'd like to lose five pounds by February 10th. That's totally attainable, I think. So just start with little goals and you know what, if you don't reach them, as long as you're trying, it will show up eventually. And especially as we're in menopause, you know, there's just so much going on with our body. I find if I don't sleep well, I'm not gonna like drink all my water maybe the next day. And that could uh, play a role also in retaining weight because I don't know why, but it just seems that uh, if I don't drink my water, I seem to retain weight. Maybe it's because I'm not flushing my body out. I don't know. Next tip that I have for you is stop the negative self-talk. I am my own worst enemy. Nobody has to say anything to me. Trust me, I can beat myself up. I don't need anybody else's help. In the past, I would have beat myself up and said, oh, you, you didn't get to your goal of 25 pounds. Like what's wrong with you? But then like now I'm saying, I lost 20 pounds, like relax, you know, that that's good. So just try and shift your mindset. Instead of always being like the negative or the aggressor in your weight loss journey, be kind to yourself. And you know, kindness goes a long way. And I feel that whenever I speak kindly to myself, that I am more apt to follow the program and want to take better care of myself. Just try it. I know it sounds simple, it sounds weird, but it works, trust me. Could I ask you for a favor? I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers before the end of June, and it would really help my channel out if you could click that subscribe button, give this video a like, and leave me a comment and let me know what types of videos you would like to see from me. Thank you so very much, I appreciate it. Another thing that has really helped me is I figured out what my vice is. And for me, it is candy. I have been a candy addict since I was a child. And that is when my sugar addiction started. Because I remember both of my parents were smokers. And when I was in grade school, they would say, here's 25 cents, go to the corner store, get me a pack of cigarettes. 
And you know, I, I would get 25 one cent candies. Remember those days? Oh, I can still picture myself with a big bag of candy. And that's where I believe my sugar addiction started. I've never been an overeater. I'm not somebody to sit and eat plates and plates of food. That is not me. Honestly, I could probably go on one meal a day. I'm just not that interested in food. I could eat the same thing over and over again. I love healthy food. I love vegetables and things like that. But this is where I go wrong, is whenever I bring candy into the house, if I bring a bag of Werther's candy into the house, that bag of candy has to be gone the first day because it is calling me from the cupboard. I can be in the basement all snuggled up watching a TV show and I can hear that candy talking to me from the kitchen. So I have to trudge upstairs and get that bag of candy and I'll take out three or four and I'll shut the cupboard door and the rest of the candy saying, Kathy, don't leave us here. So Kathy takes the bag of candy and she's stuffing the candy into her face while she's watching The Real Housewives and she's not paying attention that she just ate the whole bag of candy. So that's what Kathy has done for all these years until Kathy smartened up and said in July, enough, I am done. So I don't bring the candy into the house anymore. I don't really care so much for like sweets, eh, can take them or leave them, but candy and drive through Those are the two things that got me into this mess and me figuring out how to deal with them is gonna get me out of this mess. And I'm not perfect, I'm working on it. I still go to the drive through I'm not gonna ever quit going to the drive through because the minute that I put that restriction on myself, I'm gonna be at the drive through every day, three times a day. Not really, but you know what I mean. Once I say I cannot do something or I cannot have something, the internal me is gonna prove me wrong and I'm going to eat the candy and go to the drive through and eat everything else. And you know, it's not a good thing. So what I am learning to do is yes, I can go to the drive through but I'm making healthier choices. So, you know, if that is something that can help you, you know, try it. I told my family at Christmas time, do not buy me any chocolates or any candy. Cause normally, you know, they would get me some candy, put it in my stocking. I said, I just, I can't deal with that right now. Like I know what I can and cannot deal with. Maybe two years from now I will be able to, but at this point in time, I know that it is dangerous for me to have that in the house. And if they want to have it, they don't, they don't really like candy, but say if they did, I would just ask them, would you mind just putting this in your room or somewhere I don't go? So out of sight, out of mind. But the minute that I bring it into the house, I know that it's there and it's dangerous. So, you know, if um, Joe Louis or Tootsie Rolls, if that's your vice, try not bringing it into the house. And if you get the craving, this is what helped me get over the sugar monster before Christmas. I kind of got back onto sugar a bit, so I'm dealing with that now. But I really was having headaches and withdrawal and I wanted those Werther candies so bad. So I told that to my dietitian. So she said, well, try having like a balanced snack. So I have like maybe an apple, I'll have a cheese string and maybe 10 almonds, or I could have an orange and I could have some almonds. But what is really helping me whenever I get that craving, which sometimes can come sometimes in the afternoon, but more so like around seven at night, is I will take a cheese stick and I'll take 10 almonds. And if I'm still a little hungry, I'll have an apple and my water. And I make like a little charcuterie board and that is what I will have around 6.30 to 7 at night. And I'm telling you, that combination works for me and I forget about the candy altogether. So find something that works for you. I'll link my balanced plate diet here, the video where I go into depth and I'll be doing a more in-depth video in the next month or so if you want more information on that. But just try that tip and see maybe it would help you out. The next thing that has really helped me out as I'm losing weight is I'm wearing true to size clothing. I know as somebody that has carries most of her weight in the belly, 
I want to like cover that area up. And it seems like, oh, if I just wear like an extra large sweatshirt or whatever, that's going to hide my big belly. Well, it does, but then it makes me look like I'm two times bigger than what I actually am. So what I've started doing is I've taken my measurements and whenever I buy new clothes, I buy for the body size that I am at that moment. I have went down two sizes. Depending on the brand, I can wear an XXL in like Banana Republic, Old Navy. Uh, I like to get petite clothing if I can and Talbots carries petite plus size. I'm still on a 2X with the Talbots just because my shoulders are very broad, but I think I could maybe go down to a 1X. And I actually placed an order where I, I did order one thing in a 1X. I just wanted to see like how it would fit. And especially if I'm losing weight, you know, going into spring, I want it to uh, be able to wear it for a while. Now, if you don't want to buy new clothing, I suggest if you can sew, maybe, you know, take your clothes in a bit cinch them in. Um, you can also find new clothes with tags on, like on Poshmark, eBay, at your local thrift store. There are ways for you to buy nice clothing without spending, you know, the money. But I know for myself, it is so important that I wear clothing that fits the body that I have now, because up here, if I was wearing clothing that was too big, that's just going to make me feel sloppy. And whenever I feel sloppy, I don't feel like taking care of myself. Like say every once in a while, I'll have a pajama day. Like if it's snowing, I'm blowing outside or if I have a headache or just, you know, I'm tired. I need a break. I'll stay in my pajamas all day. But I know those days when I stay in my pajamas, I'm going to be like a sloth. <laughs> I'm not going to work out and probably I'm not going to make the best choices when it comes to food. So I feel for myself that if I can buy clothing that fits the body that I have now, and yeah, I may not wear it in two months, but I can donate it. If it's in good shape, I can, you know, resell it to recoup some money to buy new clothes. So just maybe try those tricks. I'm not saying you have to like go out and buy yourself a whole new wardrobe, but maybe just try it with one or two pieces and you'll kind of see what I mean. Like look in the mirror with the clothing that fits your body now, Put the clothing on that is too big for you and then you know nine times out of ten i think you're gonna agree that you look better with the clothing that fits your body now but it's just the mental boost that i feel that i get from it that is really beneficial the next tip that i have for you is something that i really struggle with and i made a video about my emotional eating and i'm thinking about doing another one and because as I'm losing the weight, I feel that I'm doing a lot of introspective work. I think that's how you say it, where I'm digging deep and I want to know why. What is it about the bag of candy that I feel the bag of candy is going to fix whatever I'm craving inside? It's not about the food. It's about an emotional need. And as I'm losing weight and the weight is shedding, I feel like things are coming up that I had buried long, long ago. I'm not gonna get into details, but most of my adult life, I have been the primary caregiver of my husband. He was diagnosed with a very rare form of cancer 29 years ago, was very, very ill, um, had a bone marrow transplant, and just August, September of last year was diagnosed with another form of cancer that is not treatable at the moment. So it's really hard living with this dark cloud over your head all the time. And the older that I get, I'm finding it more and more difficult because now it is starting to take a toll on me, mostly my mental health. So it's really important for me that I figure out a way to deal with my emotions and I have to start allowing myself to feel my emotions. For so many years, I had to be strong to hold the family together. I had a farm to run. I had like commitment. I had animals that needed to be milked twice a day. They needed to be fed three times a day. Like I just couldn't, you know, go off to the hospital and forget about the farm. I had a young child to take care of. So I had responsibilities. So the way that I dealt with the stress and, you know, keeping myself together because I couldn't afford to fall apart was that I would shove my emotions down with food. I don't have time to make a healthy meal. I'm just gonna go to the drive-thru and pick that up. And it just became a habit. Like the drive-thru food isn't that great. It's just a habit for me. Yes, once in a while, it might be a nice treat, 
but it is the way that I soothed my emotions. The way that some people smoke, some people drink, some people do other things. That is how I dealt with uh, the stress in my life. That's how I kept the farm and my family intact and survived all those years. Now, at 55 years old, I feel like I've hit a brick wall with this latest diagnosis. And it's tough. And I'm getting migraines again, which are not fun. And I have to find a way that I can cope with the stress. And I know what I need to do. I need to move my body every day. I need to walk. And for me, it's better if I walk outside. Thankfully, we are having one of the mildest winters that I can ever remember. We don't even have snow. It is four degrees Celsius. That is wonderful because normally this time of year, it's minus 20, minus 25 Celsius with maybe two feet of snow on the ground. I don't like winter. The thing about the weather now, it's mild, but it's also very dark and overcast. Haven't seen the sun, you know, in weeks. That is very difficult to deal with because I'm one of those people that if it's always dark out, I kind of have low energy. So I know for myself, I need to get outside and move my butt. And even if I just walk around the block, which I have done a few times, but I need to be doing it on a regular basis. Even if it's only 10 or 15 minutes to start with, I need to do it because I know by doing that, if I get out of the house and it's cold out, I'm going to walk real quick to get back home where it's warm. I do have a treadmill, but I don't like walking on it. And I don't use it, but I know if I go outside, if I want to come home, I got to walk home. But also I'm breathing the fresh air, maybe saying hello to one or two neighbors. If the sun does peek out and I see the sun, the blue skies, it's going to help to lift my mood. So it's really, really important. And that is something that I'm going to work on for 2024. And it's really important that I have to, to do that because otherwise I'm afraid I'm just going to suppress my emotions and, you know, I'm going to end up in a big mess and, um, you know, things aren't going to go well for me. So not feeling my emotions, I just, a trick that I do is if I, I'm feeling something like I, I have a craving, say I want a Tim Hortons donut. I'll say, what is that donut going to give you that you can't give yourself? And I think about it and I'll say, I'm, I'll make you a deal. If you want that donut 24 hours from now, you can have the donut. So I said, okay. So then the next day after 24 hours, if I think about the donut, I think I'm going to have the donut, right? But most of the time I don't think about the donut again. So it's not about the donut. It's about whatever I'm feeling at that time that is making me feel uncomfortable. I don't want to feel that uncomfortable feeling. So I'm going to stuff a donut in my face and forget about it. But guess what? All those feelings are popping up again now. So, you know, I'm a work in progress. I'm trying to figure out what works for me. And this is a big one, feeling my emotions. That's, that's a big one for me that I, I really have to focus on this year. The next thing that I suggest is quit denying yourself treats. I know for myself, if I completely deny myself to ever have a treat, it's not going to work and it's not going to be feasible because I'm going to then start to obsess about whatever it is that I want. And I'm going to eat everything and then eventually just give into my craving and have the treat. So I like to fall back on what I had said previously about the 24 hour rule. Now, say if we're out at dining at a friend's house for dinner, you know, if they offer dessert, I'm going to have a dessert, but I'll just have like one dessert, not two or three help servings. So I think it's really important that you still allow yourself to have treats. But if like bringing a chocolate bar into the house is a trigger, I don't recommend bringing it in. But if you are out and somebody offers you a piece, I think that it is okay to have one piece because this has to be sustainable for life. And am I going to stand here today and say that never, ever, ever again will I eat candy? No, but I have to find a way right now that it can work into my weight loss journey. And hopefully as I'm dealing with the emotions as they're coming up in the future, I can coexist with the candy because we still have to live. You still have to enjoy your life. Otherwise, you know, it's going to be a long, miserable life. The next tip that I have is stop caring about what other people think. And I get it, especially 
you know, being somebody that is on social media, I am exposing myself to the world. And there are people out there that are just plain nasty. And sometimes, you know, somebody will say something extremely rude and ignorant. And I have come to understand that it is not about me, it is about them. Now that is easier said than done because sometimes if you're really proud of the work you put out there and you, I love like interacting with you all in the comments and once in a while, you know, there'll be one person that's just, you know, not a regular and they'll just say something really hateful and miserable. And my first reaction is, well, I just want to give them a piece of my mind. But then I'm like, no, that you have to be the adult here. And what does it matter what they think of me? They don't know me. They don't know how I am. They don't know what I'm feeling. So just delete it and move on. That is something that I work on in my profile life. I, I don't know how to say it, but in my personal life, I quit caring what other people thought of me a long time ago, because if you knew me in person, I am exactly as I am on camera. However, I take nothing from anybody. And it's not that you have to be rude, but you have to stand up for yourself and you can be firm and assertive and just remember that it is only you that you owe anything to. You aren't responsible for how anybody else is feeling. Trust me, been there, done that. It's really important that you are true to yourself and you just can't let all the noise from everybody else get in your head. Just remember that you are important. You are worth the effort and who cares what anybody else thinks at the end of the day, all that should matter to you is a reflection looking back at you from the mirror. And if you can look in the mirror and know that you are a good, decent human being, that's all that matters. And another tip that I have, and it's something that I learned from the dietitian, and I can tell you firsthand, it does help. And it keeps me on track. And the days that I do not skip a meal or a planned snack that I am feeling satiated and full all day because those planned balanced snacks and meals just to help keep the blood sugar level. It's the unplanned snacks like the three o'clock chocolate bar craving that gives you the spike and then can, you know, go down the rabbit hole of making bad choices. So don't skip your meals. Find a way to get your three balanced meals in a day, your two balanced snacks. And you're going to find that you don't think about food anymore um, because you don't have to worry about, you know, how many points or how many calories you can eat. But do plan ahead if you know that you kind of maybe crave sugar like I do sometimes. So, for instance, I'm getting groceries tomorrow and I ordered some red seedless grapes and I will have maybe 20 red seedless grapes, and then that satisfies my sugar craving. I have to do that until I know now that the sugar that I ate over the holidays is out of my body. So I'm not bringing candy into the house. I had my treat over the holidays, and let me tell you, I paid for it last night. I had to take a Tylenol, my hips, my knees, every joint in my body was throbbing, and I thought, oh my gosh, like I'm getting sick, and then I was like, no, you had, two Reese's peanut butter cups yesterday. So then I thought, yes, that's right. Because now I am aware that if I eat sugar, I'm going to be really sore. So do I want the pain? Is it really worth 10 seconds of, you know, enjoying that sugary treat to have like eight hours of throbbing pain all night? No, but I figured that out for myself and that has allowed me to get to this point. So, just like learning about your body, how your body reacts to different foods. Um, I think if you start eating more vegetables, you'll notice that, you know, maybe your body is happier. Maybe you're more regular. Maybe you feel more energetic. You know, just really try and be mindful and pay attention to the food that you're putting into your body and how it makes you feel afterwards. So if you haven't watched my weight loss playlist, I'll link it here. Remember, subscribe to the channel and thank you so much for spending time with me today. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye.